welcome back to another video guys thank you guys so much for clicking on this video if it's your first video returning subscriber returning viewer thank you guys so much for coming back to another video guys uh beautiful day today i decided to do a video outside for you guys hopefully you guys enjoy the wonderful views behind me <laughs> as you guys can see i'm rocking my northwestern polytechnic gear this is the college that i went to guys let me just clear that up guys a lot of persons are always messaging me asking me which college did i went to i went to northwestern polytechnic located in beautiful grand prairie alberta if you guys are interested in coming to this college don't hesitate to reach out to me through my email right in the link description right down below and i'll be sure to connect you guys with the international student liaison officers and also the assistant dean all right guys yeah we are connected like that now smash a like what am i gonna be talking about today guys so i'm gonna be talking about how much money do i make working in a bank in canada right so a lot of persons are coming from many different countries around the world some persons are interested in working in a bank so i think it would be a very interesting video to just share um so you guys can have a realistic expectation of what kind of income can you expect if it is that you land a bank job in canada right if this is a content that you guys like as i said again please smash a like on the video um comment and subscribe it really helps out the video guys and it really 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 helps out the channel all right guys now with that being said now banking in canada is kind of a little bit different than banking in jamaica that's where i'm from in case you guys are new now bank working in a bank in jamaica is almost like you are the creme de la creme the cream of the crop you know like your mother is proud of you your, your family is proud of you you're working in a bank you're a big deal right so there's a level of prestige that comes with working in a bank in jamaica and probably it's the same in a lot of other countries around the world right like oftentimes when i talk to my colleagues i'm like if you guys were in jamaica working in a bank you guys would almost be like looked upon like the prestigious set in the society and they always find it funny because here in Canada, working on a bank is a career and it's a very good career, don't get me wrong, but it is not looked upon the same as if you are working in a bank in Jamaica, if you guys understand what I mean. It's just another job. It's a career that is very lucrative. It's very, um, how would I say, there's a lot of opportunities to grow and to develop and create a wonderful life for yourself. However, from the society looking on, yeah, you're just a banker, <laughs> right? So they get that first well, first immigrants thing. come to Canada, they get bank jobs and they feel like they're going to be getting the same level of um, prestigious treatment that they get in their home country. Sorry to disappoint you guys, but it's not the same here. So I wanted to start with that. Now, I've worked with three different banks in Canada since I've been here, right? I will not call the names, but I'll give you a brief description. So you guys can probably figure it out for the long-standing viewers of my channel you guys will probably know the banks that i've worked for in the past but for all the persons who are new i'll just give you a brief, brief description so you guys can kind of have form an opinion right so the first bank that i work with is uh is a smaller bank um located federally which means that it's in most provinces um alberta saskatchewan bc ontario you know but it's a smaller bank it's not regarded as one of the big five banks now the big five banks in canada is cibc scotia bank td bmo and rbc right not in a chronological order right so it, there's not necessarily a number one number two number three or whatever there's just a big five right so cibc scotia bank td bmo and rbc those are considered the big five banks in Canada. And big five is because of its revenue, its size, and also like I know it's located in almost every single major cities and towns in Canada, right? Now, I have worked with a bank that is outside of the big five, right? That's the first bank job I got in Canada. And that job, guys, was a sales and service representative, which is basically a fancy name for a, a, a frontline teller. That was the first job that I get when I, that when I started my banking journey here in Canada, right? I was still in school, not Western Polytechnic in case you guys forgot. I was still in school. Uh, I was an international student, which means that I could have only worked part-time. So I was a part-time teller, right, at that bank. Now, it was a very good environment to work in because it gave me the platform I needed to get all the information, you know, in terms of the financial sector here in Canada and also the banking norms, practices and like just just the holistic banking aspect in Canada so that was a very good job and it was a very good place to start now that bank that I work with 
um, funnily enough, is one of the few banks in Canada that frontline staff is actually hired on a full-time or part-time basis. So all the other big fives that I mentioned, frontline staff being tellers are hired on a part-time only basis, right? So there's no full-time tellers in the big five banks. So as in the frontline teller, unless you are a senior teller or the manager of the frontline kind of thing, but if you are just a teller, just a CEA as they call it, customer experience associate or a sales and service rep, in the big fives, um, you're employed on a part-time basis, either 25 hours a week, 30 hours a week, some even give a 15 hours a week, right? So it's very important to know that that, that teller position here in Canada in the big five banks is predominantly a part-time opportunity. Now, all the banks that I've noticed pay similar wages, and I'm talking about the banks and not necessarily the credit unions because the credit unions typically have their own governance and their own structure where it compounds to compensation and stuff like that. Now, but the big five banks and the banks in general try to be competitive with each other because it's a competition to get staff, right? So most of the banks pay in and around the same area. Now, for frontline tellers, guys, like a frontline teller, in the big five banks, you're paid an hourly wage, not a salary. It's very important for you guys to know that. Now, unless you get a job in the bank that I talked about where I started, where you're actually employed on a full-time basis as a frontline um, personnel, then you get a salary. Now, the difference between a salary and an hourly wage is you're employed full-time. If you you get vacation, sick days, if you're not at work, you still get paid. Being employed on an hourly basis, if you're not at work, you don't get paid for that time, right? Now, you do get vacation and sick days in some cases, but if like on a statutory holiday, if you're not scheduled to work, stuff like that, you don't get paid for it. Now, the average hourly rate for a frontline teller in the big five banks, guys, is not as much as you think it's going to be, right? Now, as I said, in the Caribbean, banks and stuff like that is a prestigious career and like, yeah, it's competitive. But the hourly rate on average for tellers here that I've noticed can range anywhere from $18 to $21 per hour. Depending on the bank, depending on your experience, and depends on the amount of skills that you bring to the table. But if you are front-end personnel, you're typically looking anywhere between $18 to $21 per hour. That is what you earn. And I wanted to break it down so you guys understand the difference in dynamics, right? Now, when you graduate from just being a teller and say, for example, you become the lead teller or the senior teller, for example, then you are then probably employed on a full-time basis and then you'll get a salary, right? Now, what that salary looks like is really dependent, again, on your experience, depending on your skills, what you bring to the table. Typically speaking, guys, what I've observed and based on research, and again, guys, I've worked in three different banks and I have many friends who work in different banks that I haven't worked in. If you become a senior teller, right? A senior teller or a uh, customer experience lead as it's called in some banks then you are then become full-time and then you earn a salary right now that salary can range anywhere from forty five thousand dollars to fifty five thousand dollars per year right so forty five thousand dollars to fifty five thousand dollars per year is typically what they pay like full-time staff frontline right like a t um, customer experience lead or a senior teller right so anywhere between 45 to 55 depending on your skills experience and also guys depending on the bank so choose the right bank that's the point as well now say you become the manager of the frontline if you become the manager of the frontline you are looking anywhere between 55,000 to 65,000 dollars per year right again that's a full-time position you are paid a salary not an hourly range right now the the, the teller position or the is the only part-time position that is that i've really observed right now if you become the manager of the front line you're looking at anywhere between fifty-five thousand to sixty-five thousand Canadian dollars a year which is not bad income right because um that is average income for a lot of other industry so that is very competitive so now you start cooking with gas right now you start making some money and stuff like that now the more experience you come with is the more you can negotiate because here in canada it's all about negotiating and saying what you bring to the table and then actually sticking to what you worth and then demand it in a little way right can't be too demanding either still but hopefully you guys understand what i mean so um 45 000 
sorry, 55,000 to 65,000 if you're the manager of the front line. Now, let's go into some other positions in the bank, guys. Now, you, it's called different names at different banks, but obviously it's the same function. Now, you have a position that's called um, account manager in the bank that I've worked it, the very first bank that I've worked it, the account manager is a is a position that um, open accounts, um, close accounts, service clients, um, deal with um, investment, mortgages, retail clients, right? Because the bank is supported typically into retail, which is um, personal banking, and also um, commercial or business or call different names, different places, but ultimately business banking, right? Small business banking, commercials, diff different aspect, right? So we're talking predominantly about retail because that's where I've worked. I've never worked in small business. I've never worked in the business aspect of bank before. So really focusing really on the retail aspect of banking. Right? The very first bank I worked in, it's called an account manager, right? Now that position is um, usually the natural progression after graduating from frontline in that particular bank, right? Now in that position, you are now here opening accounts, maintaining accounts, relationship manager, right? You are like dealing with investment, servicing clients on a one-on-one -on -one basis. Now that position is almost equivalent to the frontline manager where you earn anywhere between 55 to say $65,000 per year. Depends on the level of skills, experience, and skill set as I keep going back to because that's what determines really your income, right? So different banks, different things. Now, the bank has a lot of different aspects and a lot of different accreditation that you have to get to focus on. Now, say for example, you're an account manager and you have mutual funds. Mutual funds is a license that you can get to sell a specific type of investment here in Canada. Now, if you have your mutual funds licensing, then you can then now negotiate IAP because then you can service the more I worth or the, the, the different type of investments, right? Now, the, the big five banks, um, they call that different things. Like the second bank that I worked with was one of the big five banks. That bank, they call that position personal banking associate. Now, if you guys know that term, you'll figure out which bank that is. Now, the personal banking associate is similar to the account manager where they open accounts, they deal with pretty much servicing accounts on a retail basis. But the difference with that big five bank is they don't do investment. And they also do some form of telework, right? Now, the, the, the personal banking associate or the PBA associate um, position is almost equivalent to the account manager. So you're looking at anywhere between, say, 50000 to 65000 as based on the skills, experience, and, and talent as well. Now, let's get, let's get into the meat of the matter now, which is the financial advisor, right? Now, the financial advisor position is a position that um, focuses a lot on investments, um, relationship management, different for every bank right some banks call financial advisors personal bankers so if you hear the term personal banker it's the same as a financial advisor right so you have different levels to financial advisor you have financial services advisor you have seen a financial advisor which is my role currently and you know just different names for different things now the financial advisor is a person who is gonna like not necessarily do the day-to-day -day banking in terms of opening accounts and servicing like them stuff there is more more focus on investment and relationship management like estate planning um investment planning financial planning stuff like that right those persons are that position typically earn the higher end of the stick so you're looking at anywhere between sixty thousand to eighty thousand dollars per year um especially if you're mutual funds licensed and you are financial planning licensed the cifpr the um different terminology that I won't get into, right? If you have your accreditation, then you can get the higher end of the state, but you're looking at anywhere between 60,000 to 80,000 Canadian dollars per year. As a financial advisor or a senior financial advisor or a personal banker, as I said, it's the same thing, different name, right? So it depends on your level of skills, your level of experience, background and qualification. Then you can negotiate, right? So anywhere between 60 to 80, and that's just because a financial advisor or a senior financial advisor, or a senior personal banker is a senior position in the bank as well, equivalent to a manager, right? Now, the only difference between that person and the actual branch manager or assistant branch manager is that you don't actually manage people. Now, in my previous role to becoming a senior financial advisor, I was a manager of, of the front line. So I actually manage people, which is equivalent to what I'm doing now in terms of um, almost like seniority but it's just that i'm not a manager at this present moment in time 
Now, as I said, anywhere between sixty to eighty thousand, as depending on the bank, depends on the experience and all of those lovely stuff, right? Now, the higher you go in the bank, guys, is the more prestigious than your career start to become. Now, let's talk about like the assistant branch manager and the branch manager. And what do you need to become a branch manager in a bank in Canada? Now, averagely speaking, guys, you need a lot of experience. Now, you want to be coming up through the ranks in terms of you're a better branch manager if you have done everything in terms of if you have worked on the front line manage the front line do um the, this advice part of it because it's not called sales it's called advice if you do the financial planning part of it if you have your mutual funds license that's all you would need to become a branch manager now if you're a branch manager with a lot of those experiences guys well-rounded well fit and all of them accreditations there you're looking at an upward of eighty thousand to a hundred thousand dollars per month average now again it can be a lot more or it can be a little bit less if it is that somebody took a chance on you now Averagely speaking, as a branch manager, you're looking at anywhere between eighty thousand to hundred thousand Canadian dollars per year. That's my goal, guys. That's the next. That's the next step in my journey. That's where I'm heading to next. So after doing this um, SFA role that I'm in right now, my next step is to become a branch manager, right? So that's the next natural progression based on what I have done. Started as a frontline part-time teller, became um, full-time, became senior. Became manager of the front line. Now I'm doing senior financial advising. The natural progression is to become a branch manager. So definitely check out, check out, check out, check out my calendar. Let me just squeeze this in. Check out my calendar if it is that you want to know how I did it in just three and a half years. If you want career coaching that can help you to be on a similar projection coming to Canada as an immigrant, book a one-on-one. -on -one. Check out the calendar. The link is in the description right down below. Also, guys, if you're interested in going to Northwestern Polytechnic, guys, don't hesitate to just reach out to me, all right? I can put you onto the right people and get you into the seat, all right, guys? So don't hesitate to do that. Um, Northwestern Polytechnic is a wonderful college. That's where I've been. That's what I've done. All my, like, all my Canadian schooling experience is centered around that, and there's no complaints. Wonderful staff, friendly, friendly staff, and you will not feel deserted, I promise you. Plus, Grand Prairie is a wonderful city, but I'm not going to get into that. I've done tons of video about Grand Prairie. I'm not going to talk about that anymore. You guys, by now, should know why you should come to Grand Prairie. All right, guys? Assistant branch manager, if it is that you um, want to do some assistant branch management before you actually become a branch manager, that's okay, too. You're looking at anywhere between $70,000 to $90,000 per year. All right, guys? If this video was somewhat informative, don't hesitate to hit that like button, guys. It really helps out the video. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't subscribed already guys and please 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 drop a comment let me know what you think and also let me know what you're watching from where you're watching from guys all right guys thank you guys so much again for the love route to 6,000 subscribers see you guys in the next video